When I was actually arrested, I couldn't believe what I had done. Um, that drugs had actually made me reach a point that was so low in my life that had led me to jail. And so you have to make up your mind and have those safeguards in place that are gonna protect you from, from falling in those moments of weakness. And we're going to have moments of weakness. And before I knew it was a problem, I was too far into it to be able to stop. 12 people in this block when I get back on Monday. I'm looking at you, buddy. <laughs> when I'm not sober, I mask everything. I'm literally a zombie, but I think I'm okay and I'm not. I wish people knew that we're just, we're not all bad people. We can be better if we're given the opportunity and the tools to do better. And just the chance. over here and we'll get brushes and rollers going on the bottom section and you guys going on the top. I'm sorry, I opened the I need to get all the way around these boxes. We are a month before graduation. This is a really critical point in the program because they're finishing up classes, um, they're, they're finishing up their service hours. Each individual has to do 20 hours of service. It's part of their moral recognition therapy. Um, it's generally called MRT. Um, and they have to do 20 hours of service. And it's all about learning to step outside of yourself and, and serve others and feel proud for helping others. Um, so we're really limited here in the jail. So we do a lot of painting. Um, this group of men took it upon themselves to paint the chapel, which was a huge job. Um, they work hard when they're doing those things and they feel good about themselves. It gives them an opportunity to get out of the block and see a little different scenery than what they're used to. And it, and it instills in them this seed of service. They say it's a matter of time, a thousand days and the sun won't shine before I come back. Happy, nothing's going to stop me. I'm making my way home. I'm making my way. Four. Dispatch forty three one. I get asked all the time, hey, is JCAP really working? Um, how do you know it's working? There was, uh, there was one graduate that we had a lot of conversations about uh, his children. And he wanted to have time with his children and, and wanted to prove, uh, first of all, for himself that he could do this and, and stay clean, but wanted to be able to have a life back with his four children. So a couple days on Facebook, there was a photo that popped up with him sitting on the couch with his four children. So um, he's staying clean. He's having a life with his children. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So um, is JCAP working? Absolutely, it's working. And that JCAP graduate sitting on that couch with his four children doesn't happen, doesn't happen if it wasn't for the volunteers on day one to, to graduation, going back and teaching, helping, mentoring, doesn't happen. So um, absolutely it's working. So far we have graduated 24 um, inmates from JCAP. Of the 24 inmates who have graduated, 17 have been released from jail already. And of those 17, um, 12 of them are currently living sober, happy lives. Um, so as the sheriff said, we have five who have relapsed and of course Shay was one of those, um, and she lost her life on Saturday, which is really hard. Um, 
And, but I will say that it's just as hard to know that there's four others out there who aren't successful right now. But we have hope that they will use those tools that they've learned, that they will reach out to the community that they've built and that they will get back on track, that their failure right now will be short term and that they'll come back and they'll, they'll move ahead. So this gives us a 70% success rate right now, which is pretty good. Other programs in the state run at about 30 to 40% success rate. Um, the reason that we're so successful is because we have amazing community support. I really like that shirt. All right. I'd say even the first couple of months of this program, I was still like lost. Like I was sitting through the classes and I was doing things they asked me to do, but I wasn't fully in, like fully engaged in everything that they were asking or that they wanted. It probably didn't happen. Yeah, I'd say probably about halfway through the program until it really, and, I, and something really, I mean, it was literally just clicked. Throughout my addiction, I've been nothing but selfish. What I want, what I don't want, what I'm gonna do, what I'm not gonna do. But I've missed out on so many opportunities and things with the people that I love. I've missed, you know, weddings and I've missed babies being born and I've missed birthdays and anniversaries and Christmases and I've missed all that. And that doesn't only affect me, that affects the people that, that I'm not there with. So the selfishness just, I mean, I don't know, it was really weird. I kind of just woke up one day and I was like, this is crazy. Like, I, I just found the entire key to my recovery is to not be selfish. And that's how I've been looking at this ever since. Devon? Courtney. Yes. Come in. Okay. Please. One second. Whenever you're done. It's not like it's a huge deal or anything. Uh, I'll put this on this one. And I don't like how it looks. Okay. So what should I put here? Um, any position available. Any available would probably even be sufficient. Okay. Thank you, Chris. We try to kind of switch things up this last month because we know that there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of emotions. So one of the things we do is bring in um, interviewers from the community. We bring in HR directors and general managers um, from lots of different types of companies. And they come in, um, our gentlemen have their nice interview clothes on. They have a resume they've put together um, through the Purdue Extension Office. They've got an application that they've, they've filled out. They have brief summaries of each of the businesses that are coming in so they know who they're interviewing with. And watching them put those interview clothes on, it suddenly kind of brings the program full circle because you no longer are seeing an inmate in stripes you're seeing a young man who is ready and prepared to go get a job. And they have their shoulders back, they're making eye contact, they are nervous for these individuals to come in and do these interviews, but they're really proud of their success, they're so proud of that resume, um, and they're, they're prepared. And it gives me this glimpse into what it will be like when they leave the jail that they're prepared, that they have this confidence in them that they didn't have at the beginning of the program. Um, it's a really emotional day for me because um, it's exciting. You get to see kind of the fruits of their labors come out. So Seymour Midwest. Is yeah, so read through yeah, that. Right. Seymour Midwest, read through it so that you're prepared for the interview, okay? Yeah, that's what I thought they were. Yeah. Look at this. Nice. This is a pretty good thing. Isn't it so nice? It's pretty nice. Okay, so you hand them that, you hand them your resume. They're gonna look through here. They're gonna possibly ask you some questions off of here. So for instance, if I was interviewing you, I might say, um, so it looks like you're available for any positions. This is what we have right now. We're hiring for assembly people. Do you feel like that's something you can do? Are you pretty good with your hands to put rake heads on handles? Definitely. Okay. 
and then they might say, mm, I see that you've got a little bit of a history here. Why don't you tell me about that? I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have to? <laughs> well, you can say, this is how I would answer Young that and dumb, that's what I would say. I was young. I made some bad decisions that put me on I a really bad path. I was young six months ago, six and long months ago. I have worked really hard to put my life back together. I'm working really hard to make good decisions. I've cut ties with my old friends. I'm leaning on my family and my support system. I've gone through this program to try to help me learn the skills that I need. And this is my next step. That's what I would say. I would briefly mention it, but then I would let them know what I've done to make those decisions. Counteract those yeah. choices. Yeah. Okay, so do you want the button still done? interviews with companies in the community they helped helped us a lot they did they gave us pointers on things that we're doing wrong things that we need to be doing like eye contact and I really am not big on looking people in the eyes uh, I guess it comes a lot with drug abuse the way that I've always condemned myself put myself down and they've actually given me a boost it's, hey you're doing good I can only hope that the, the more JCAP goes through and, and the bigger it gets, the more that the community can see they're just like the rest of us. I think that we, we need to get back to basics. Um, we, we need to learn to trust each other again. Um, just because you make a mistake doesn't mean that you're a bad person. The jail, the work release, they've served their time. They did what they needed to do they need to move forward. If we don't stand behind them, they're never gonna get out of the cycle they're in. It's not them against us, it's we all need to come back together. Um, that's the only way we're gonna solve all of it that's going on. I've been here about three months today. This job has helped me progress in many ways. I, it's allowed me to buy a car. It's allowed me to pay off my fines from court. And all together just keeps me busy, keeps me mindful. I work with a bunch of good people and they teach me a lot of new stuff. I'm constantly learning here. It's not just a job you can clock in and clock out. Like every day you're progressing, learning something new. I met Cody when he was in high school. Um, when I was the attendance officer, we had some run-ins with him there. Um, move forward after he graduates from high school, I run into him again in JCAP. Now he works at Flexos, um, doing a great job. Uh, he, he, he's a good kid. I know he's a good kid, and I know he has good in him. Heather actually told me in JCAP that she would not hire me. 
and it was just by it was during mock interview she just by the way I kind of came across I was nervous in our first mock interviews I sat down with Daniel um, I didn't like how he sat in the chair because he was slouched um, he lacked self-confidence uh, he was quiet he didn't speak up when I asked him questions or he asked me questions um, and so when we left the mock interview I told him I probably would never hire him um, fast forward a few months I've watched Daniel grow into a person working here at Flexost um, that I didn't know he was. Um, I've watched him become more vocal. Tonight, I watched him make tape for the first time, something he's never done, and he just jumped in and did it. And when he was finished, he actually looked at me and said, I've never done that before. And I just taught myself. Um, the confidence that was just coming out of him is all the reason to do this. Because if we hadn't given him the opportunity, he'd have never had the chance to do that. I've got four weeks left to work release, and I have to find a place to stay. And I was actually just talking to Heather about it, and she's gonna help me look for a spot that I can afford and that is close to work. I'll make sure I'm here every day. And she's been, with us through the whole thing. I mean, encourage us. She comes through every so often, checks on us in the middle of the night. I mean, it's been really helpful. It's really opened my eyes to how many people in the community actually do care and are here to support us and help us through this struggle. taking them down with you. Right here in my hand. And I brought a pen so we can do them downstairs too, okay? Are you guys ready to go? Okay, you guys got all your cards? You look at all the hard work. What about those? You look at the last four months, what they've gone through, mentally, emotionally, all the hard work, what they've learned. You just hope and pray that everything they've worked for for the last four months and been taught that they take that to the next level. It's time to take everything that you've learned to the next level and small steps out into our communities. So for a lot of our participants, they maybe didn't graduate from high school, they haven't left a job on good terms before, they, they might in their life feel like they've never completed anything, we hear that a lot. And so for them to have this celebration of completing something that they've really worked for is really important and um, it's, just a, it's a good tangible evidence for them to be able to say, I did that. Graduation is, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to it. Um, I'm ready to take the next phase of my life, the next step, um, ready to put all these tools into use and ready to test, my, test myself. I don't think I, I've never completed a program uh, outside of here. This is actually the first thing I've completed since high school. And that was, you know, eight years ago. I guess I would just like the community to know that, you know, there's people inside of these walls that are much, much more than their record shows or than their mugshot tells or that their ink free post says or that the newspaper says. I'm not going to allow my past to define my future and uh, that's sometimes hard to do but uh, through this program I mean we've just learned to press on and learned that it's not always the end you know what I mean there's there's ways to do things 
And at the end of the day, you just can't give up. Learning that a lot of my past has led me to my drug addiction, trying to hide the pain, uh, forget about things, forget about all the ways I've been hurt, um, and how to deal with those has definitely helped. Jake has definitely helped with a lot of those. That drug addiction is can definitely ruin your life. Um, it has ruined mine more in more ways than I I would like to admit. For your love, I will go far. I wanna be wherever you are. I know I'm coming back for you. Our love is a river long, the best right in a million wrongs. I know I'm coming back to you. And I'm happy, nothing's going to stop me. I'm making my way home, I'm making my way I go solo, oh I go solo I'm making my way home, I'm making my way I don't want something to happen to me and my kids not be there, not be able to see me and I don't want something to happen to my kids or you never know what's going to happen yet. Every day is precious. So I, I don't want this life anymore. Take care of yourself first. We know yes. you want to get to the kids, but you got it. You, it's all about you guys. Because yeah. the family's going to come running to you wanting all this. And, and no, no, no. I've got to figure this out first. It's all, go slow. And go slow. I think the reason why I appreciate JCAP so much is because when we're put in jail, um, we're in a moment, we're in an environment where we're, we're completely taken away from the outside world because you can take away substance all day long. But if you don't get to the core of the problem, which is yourself, then I mean, I don't know what else you can do. So I'm trying to learn how to retrain and reprogram my brain and my behaviors. Yeah. And I always say intentions and actions, those are two things that go together. And I have all the great, like all the best intentions in the world. But until my actions follow that, my intentions don't necessarily mean anything. So that's where I'm trying to learn how to make those things really. Yeah. Capture as well. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's that is literally the whole goal of this yeah, program yeah. is like give you time to pause, think about yourself, who you are, who you want to become, what what are your talents, what are your strengths, are you a great listener, like. Yeah. JCAP is like, what I'm really liking about it is it's really, the big thing that's reiterated is self-worth continuously. And like all of our groups kind of relate, but it's like all of you, all the instructors and everybody constantly reminds us of our self-worth and what we're capable of. And I know that I always struggle with that. So I always say you don't get arrested, you get rescued. Yes. <laughs> we live in such an amazing community that because of our community, JCAP exists and it's able to grow and thrive and we're making a difference in in our participants lives but that ripple effect is is unknown at this point and the lives that we're changing because of our community is um, kind of amazing to think about.